This is Dr. Bruce L. Hartman with my favorite pastor, Pastor Lou. And welcome to our YouTube channel, Two Men in Jesus. Today's episode is called The Elixir Called Compassion. So, Lou, how are you today? I'm doing great, Bruce. Coming off of last week's high, it's just incredible feeling. Yeah, you had an incredible Saturday, which I know we're going to talk about as we do the, the blog this morning. Um, so I'm dying to hear about it. It's, um, it's wonderful work that you do. So it, today we're calling this episode, The Elixir Called Compassion. And you used Henry Nouwen as your foundational setup for this whole blog that you wrote. And as a reminder for our viewers, if you'd like to receive Lou's daily blogs, just go to www.churchbythebaynj.com and request. So Lou, he, Henry Nouwen says, God is compassionate. Then certainly those who love God should be compassionate as well. So there's a wonderful thought here, Lou. And, why did you pick this and how, what events last week helped you in selecting this verse? Well, Henry Nouwen just, he, he always impresses me because of his simplistic messages. And I got that from the compassion that I saw last week as we were in the streets of Atlantic City. We were fortunate to have the state police mounted patrol with us. And they wanted to do community policing and community interaction, and they did. So they rode around Atlantic City on horseback, which try to picture that because it was difficult for all of us to picture, even though we were standing there. And the little kids would come up to these massive, massive horses. I mean, one of them was so tall, it, I couldn't even see the top of his head. Um, and this little child came up to the horse and starts, you know, touching and playing. The horse is very, very gentle, very well trained. And within about a minute, the horse just planted this huge kiss on top of the kid's head. And I thought to myself, if something is that massive, that powerful, that strong, and that tender, how much more compassion does our God show to us? That's a, it's a wonderful story. And, um, it's, it's a story of love. So God is compassionate, but you know, in your blog, you, you make about four really good points. And the first one is, in your first sentence is you say, you try as hard as you can to be perfect, but you just seem to miss every day. And like most people, you know, people always miss every day, you know? <laughs> It's hard for me to see you as somebody who makes mistakes, but why did you write this particular paragraph? Oh, because I'm the king of screw-ups. <laughs> I'll foul anything up. But also because of, of the Wesleyan mindset that both you and I share. Um, we're on the road to perfection. There's no way we're going to be perfect, but we can certainly look for it. And I think part of that is recognizing our shortcomings and recognizing the compassion that God and others show to us in spite of our mistakes. We make enough of them. We're going to continue to make them. The point you're making is we're all going to make mistakes. Belief, it sounds like, is that almost all people try to do good every day, and almost all people fall short. Is that Amen. fair? Amen. You make another point in your second paragraph, which I spent a lot of time thinking about, Lou, um, from a psychological standpoint, and I'm convinced you're right. It took me a while to, not, not because I, I didn't agree with you, but I wanted to make sure I fully understood it. And, and here's, 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 here's what you say, first paragraph. It doesn't matter what the size of the mistake is. It always brings a hope for compassion. It's a wonderful sentence. So we make a mistake, and our first thing we hope for is compassion. Why did you write this? What was in your head? Think of it, or I'll, I'll use my experience because I think that's the easiest one. If you've been hung out to dry, as many of us have, especially in work environments, 
What's the thing lacking? It's the compassion of a boss or a coworker. But when you're hung out to dry, you feel so abandoned, so neglected, so marginalized. And if only somebody could have that moment, that, that, that crumb of compassion toward you, your whole perspective changes. And going from depressed to, okay, I'll do better next time. That's, that's kind of where my head was. And that's why I said, we looked at it, forgiving spouses, understanding bosses, a coworker perhaps who has our back. We look for those people. And then sometimes when people feel so alone, they actually go to their pet and they just look for compassion from their pet. And that's why pets are so important in, in our lives, um, especially for people who live alone. This is a very good point. Lou, you're, you're getting at the heart of all of us who all make mistakes. Our first guttural response is to look for compassion. And, and I, I believe that 90, the very high 90% of all human beings, when they try to do something, they try to do a good job, and we're all bound to make mistakes. And if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying life hard enough, is my opinion. Mm -hmm. So your message is the first thing all human beings think about after they make a mistake is they have hope for compassion. I love this concept, Lou. And uh, it, it really, to me, I, I identify with it. Now you go back to the, the now and statement in your third paragraph, you say, God is a compassionate parent. And those of us who walk with God know there is no truer statement and God is compassionate. And then you extend it one more sentence, both you and now, now and say, okay, if God is compassionate with us, shouldn't be we be compassionate with other people? I think that's an amazing concept to remember when we meet somebody else who's made a mistake. There's several things in this, this paragraph. One, there's no one more compassionate than a parent. Think of all the times that we've screwed up in the eyes of our parents and we're always forgiven and we're always given that compassion and that tenderness sometimes they'll hold us to task but we're, we're forgiven the other thing is the idea of compassion if we're dealing with someone who's never experienced it who's never felt love and forgiveness and everything else can they actually be compassionate towards someone else and chances are no so it's a, it's a cylindrical thought process. Compassion is something that has to really travel in a circular pattern. It has to go from you to me, to me, to you, over and over and over again. And that's the way that God puts it out there. God gives us all of his compassion, all of his tenderness, you know, the, the definition of sin. We separate ourselves from God. God never separates himself from us. Right. So the, the, the process here is for us all to recognize we make mistakes. It doesn't make us bad people, but we make mistakes. And then the third thing is God is going to be compassionate with us. It says your challenge is to show others the same compassion God shows us. And we're all in this together. And the, it, it comes back to the golden rule is is one of your steps to doing this is to treat others as we would want to be treated. And the second thing, and this, this is important when you, that you, you want us to make our understanding of the other person, our first thought, not judgment, but to understand. And then the third is you want us to have a heart for God, to always remember God and in turn, Pass that on to how we view humankind. So lose challenge this week. Show others the same compassion God shows us. Lou, I was so impressed with last week. You told us about you were going to Atlantic City to give clothing and food bags away. How did that go? It was incredible. We, uh, we had four totally unaffiliated churches come together. Um, we had four nonprofit companies or agencies come together, all grassroots. We fed people. We gave them lunches, breakfasts. 
blessing bags. Over 500 blessing bags were given to individuals. Um, tons of clothing. I, I said um, 10 tons last week. I, I, it was probably five because I towed that trailer and I know how tough it was to tow. Um, but Bruce, it was just an incredible thing. Uh, the state police, the tenderness and kindness that they showed to the people of the community um, through those horses. I, just a, a therapeutic day all the way around and a day of blessing every possible way from the people that were in the streets to the people that are marginalized because they're out of work to all of us who were blessed by our opportunity to serve. Lou, Lou could, you, could you close us in prayer this morning? Sure, let's pray. Oh, loving God, your compassion far exceeds anything we understand. So we just ask you for a little bit of it. We know that we foul up. We do it on a regular basis, but you always bring us back. And so today, let this message just touch one person with your love, with your compassion, with your tenderness, with your joy. And let that message be the hope of the resurrection in Jesus. So that's what we're here about. And we pray it in his name. Amen. Well, Lou, thank you for your prayer. And um, I also want to say thank you for what you do for humankind. Very important stuff. And a lot of lives were made better. Thank you for this message this week as well. And this is Dr. Bruce L. Hartman with my favorite pastor, Pastor Lou. Both of us praying for you this week and remembering that Jesus went to the cross to forgive us and to show us compassion as we in turn should show, show compassion to others. Until next time. Mm -hmm.